I'm Tiffany Gilbert, and this tutorial I'm about to show you will teach you how to create liquid and fluid in animations using Blender 3D. The first step in this process would be to use the default cube shown here in Blender 3D when you first open it. It's just a small little cube, cube if you zoom up on it. Um, it's very little, but you could by selecting it, you could make it larger by using the S key. And we're just going to use this for the common domain for the liquid substance. What I'm going to do is go to the wireframe type so that you can see around both objects, because there will be two. And by adding the second one, you just click the spacebar, add, mesh, and we'll use the UV sphere, which will be our liquid. After you establish the shapes, you're going to use, uh, you make sure you're in object mode so that you're not editing quite yet. And go down to the paneling and cl click object and the physics button. And over in your far right will be the enable button. This um, gives you many options for fluid, but for now the sphere is just going to be the fluid and just click that and go back up to the shape and right click on the square domain and back down to the fluid you click enable however this time click domain because it's going to be the container which the f fluid flows into and the next step once you've selected the domain make sure you have the domain selected and you click bake baking is the process where the liquid is ultimately animating itself and it's going to flow into the domain. And up in the right corner is the process of it. Um, right now it's 57 out of 250. You can watch that to see how long it's going to take and so forth. And you can wait for it if just want to watch, or if you don't feel like waiting, just push the on the keyboard, and it'll stop, and it'll be fine the way it is. The next step, after baking, if I'm just going to zoom in, you have two shapes. One is the liquid, and one is the sphere. Um, the one I'm holding is the actual object, and the liquid is beneath it. And once I select it, by using the right arrow, you can see the process of it um, immersing under the floor. And this, there's another object up top. It's the sphere. It didn't ultimately melt onto the ground. The liquid just melted off of it. You can delete this original object to just have a complete melted liquid. But I'm going to keep it um, just to show by how it emerges into its original form by using the right arrow. And to make it, make it clear, just push the Z key and you'll see the actual um, shape and color. It's a little off angled right now. Here's the bottom. Um, what you can do is there are many different ways you can um, play with the texture or the color. Right now I'm going to select the liquid. And to set, set it smoother, if you go down to the editing button and all the way down at the bottom there's a set smooth button. Just click it, it looks more liquidy, it looks more realistic. And you can do the same for the sphere itself right click on it, set smooth, it looks a lot smoother. So, um, other things you can do, change the color, make it something other than gray. If you go down to the panel, the shading, and the material, you can change the color, pick a nice pink for it, and needs a little adjusting. Oh, well, it turned out red. You can change the ball color also. 
um, link to object, add new color. This can be green. And just adjust it. There's yellow. It makes it yellow. We'll settle for purple. <laughs> now that they're colored, you could see it a lot better um, using the left and right arrows and making the shape. Um, go back to its original form. By using those, these two arrows, all you're doing is increasing or decreasing the frame animation. Um, one by one, you could move down or move up, or you could just click to number the first one where it was just a whole sphere in itself. Or you could turn it 80, and it's on the ground. And uh, there's different materials you can use for it. Um, we could add different shapes to make the liquid flow through or other things like that. But as for that, that's the end of my tutorial. And for the new media journalism program at Seton Hill University, I'm Tiffany Gilbert.